thanking you. Yes. Thank you, you dear God, for last night lying down. Well. Thank you, Father, for our early, early ride this morning. Well, my Lord. Lord, you've been mighty good to us. Yes, you, have. you allowed us to have a portion of life, health, and strength. Well. For that, dear God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to have a roof over our heads, yes. clothes on our backs, well. And shoes on our feet. Yes. Father God, you didn't have to do it. Well. But because you're God and God all by yourself. And you can do all things but fail. Yes. Father, we dine here thanking you uh-huh. for your mercy and your uh-huh. grace. Now, Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For watching over us uh-huh. while we travel these dangerous highways. Yes, Lord Jesus. Father God, we want to thank you. Thank you. For watching over us on our jobs. Uh Father God, we want to thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
for how you protect us from the seen as well as the unseen. Uh-huh. Now, now, Thank Lord. you, dear God, Thank you, Lord Jesus. for watching over us as we travel these dangerous highways. Uh-huh. Yes, you See, are. Father God, you didn't have to do it, well. but I'm so glad you did. Uh-huh. Father God, we realize well. that you're God and God by yourself. Yes, you are, Realizing you never lost a patient or a case. Well. For that, dear God, we well, say thank you. thank you. You've been mighty good to us. Yes, you have. Somebody on this time last week, they're not here, Father. Well, but, Father, we want to thank, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to praise your holy and divine name. Well, and, Father, we don't want to be selfish, but we beg forgiveness uh-huh. for our sins. Realizing we've sinned and we've fallen short. Realizing there were some things we did we shouldn't have. Realizing there were some things we shared we shouldn't have. Father, we beg forgiveness in your son Jesus' name. Father God, we realize that you're at the hospital, Uh the nursing home, prison bars. You're God and you could be anywhere and do anything you desire. For that, dear God, we say thank you. you, Father, we asking for your Holy Spirit. Uh Send it down here to Barber Creek this morning. Father, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you in a special way. Somebody children didn't come home. Somebody wife didn't come home. And Father, we down here calling on you, realizing you can do all things but fail. Father, we ask that you bless the man of this house, that you fill his head with wisdom and knowledge, so he might tell your peoples that you are God and God by yourself. Father God, we praise you, Uh we honor you, we love you, and we thank you. you, We ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 I said I, I got a feeling that everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 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 I, yes I do. Oh, 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 I got a feeling everything. Let's be 
Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it, but God has been good to us. He has brought us through, amen, all the way through 2023. And here we stand on the precipice of a brand new year. Amen. And the thing we need to know is what we're going to do with what the time that God has given us. Amen. Are we going to waste it or are we going to use it to serve him? Amen. Because, you know, because we're in 2024. That don't mean we're going to see 2025. Amen. So I'm going to try, I don't know about you, but I'm going to try to do the best I can with the time I have to serve the Lord. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for a new year. And to those that we haven't seen this year, amen, we wish you a happy new year. Amen. And to those we have seen this year, we still say to you the same thing, happy new year. Amen. For God is certainly good. Amen. At this time, we'll ask that Reverend Wilkerson will come and do our pulpit services. Good morning. Good morning, Barbara Creek. Oh, what a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. 
Because we know, just in our mind, somebody didn't wake up this morning. And it wasn't because they was good or bad. We just thank you for opportunity for life. Yes, Lord. Thank you for opportunity for life. We're gonna, I'm going to do a scripture, and then we'll have Minister Walter come and give us a prayer. I'm going to uh, John 14, 1 through 6. John 14, 1 through 6. The Father talking about a promise he made with his, his people. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said unto John, unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. A word from God for God's people. Give God some praise. Give God some praise, church, because he is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, one more time, I stand before you, Father God. Father God, I stand humble. I stand honored, Father God, to be standing here, Father God, in your chamber. Father God, ask you to bless each and every one who came out today, Father God. Bless them in a mighty way, Father God. Right now, Father God, this world is in turmoil. There are wars all around us, Father God. And Father God, we know there's nothing too hard for you. We're asking you just to step in, Father God. Show them who is king, Father God. Our Father God, we need you today, Father God. We need you in this church house, Father God. We need you in this town, Father God. We need you, Father, up and down these dangerous highways, Father God. Yes, Father, we even need you in our home, Father God. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for being the light at the end of the tone, Father God. Thank you for walking with us, building the fence of protection around us, Father God. Father God, when I can't pray no more to you, Father God, give us a home somewhere. Somewhere we can praise your name just a little bit better than we do now. This in all prayers, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now it's giving time. It's time for tithes and offerings. As the office is going forward.
should be a witness when we come up in the house of the Lord. Not only when we come up in the house of the Lord, when we walking out there in the world, we should be a witness. He done done great things for me. Yes, sir. Father God, let us go to the throne of grace. Oh, merciful Father, once again we come not asking you for anything, just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we pray for the tithes and offering that was taken up this morning, Father God. We thank the ones that gave, Father God. We pray for the ones that had not to give, Father God. But Father God, bless them. This tithes and offering in a special way. Yes. Turn it to a hundredfold, Father God. May it be the upbuilding of this kingdom, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, and amen. Now it's announcement time. Pastor David, ministers of the gospel, congregation, your announcements. The Barrow County MLK Committee is sponsoring the commemorative programs for the MLK events. It will take place on next Monday. Part of it will take place on next Monday. There will be an MLK gospel concert on Sunday, January the 14th at White Oak Springs Church at 6 p.m. asking each community church choir to please render an A and B selection. Also on that Monday, the 15th, put on your walking shoes. There will be a march from the, from um, Quality Foods. It will start at 1045. And if you need a ride over to Quality Food, park your church, I mean your car at White Oak Church and then they'll have a bus to take you over to Quality Food for the march. And the commemorative program will start at 12 o'clock at White Oak Springs. On next Sunday, the ushers will celebrate their anniversary at 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, Minister Cooper and the Tabernacle Baptist Church will be the guests. So will you please bring a cover dish to help serve our guests? We very much appreciate it. Again, this is next Sunday at 2 o'clock, and the guest church is Tabernacle with Minister Cooper. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Any other announcements? Thank you. Let us pray for all our sick and shut in. Um, I don't know if you all know Ruthie Wallace, who used to sit back there on that second bench from the back. A uh, little petite lady, she fell and broke her arm. And she's uh, had surgery on her arm on yesterday uh, to put it back together. So be in prayer for all of our sick and shut in, not just uh, you, the ones you know, but everybody. Your prayer reaches far and wide, no matter where you are, it reaches everybody. Thank you so much. Let's go to yourself a card. You know, we serve a great God. He that's why he want to hear from us, just like we talk to each other. Talk to him the same way. Because he already know what's going on, but he'd like to hear from you. Well, we, it's preaching time now. We're going to ask this great choir of Barbara Creek to give us another selection. 
And after then, we hear our own Pastor Jerry S. Davis. Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. 
Oh, merciful Father, one more time, you have spared lives. And you have allowed lives to be removed from this side. Yes. But, Master, you have allowed us to get up out of our beds and put on our own raiment. Wow. To drink your water, to eat your food. Yes. And then, Master, you allowed us to have the capability of our bodies to get up and find ourselves one more time at the house of prayer. Yes. And for that, Master, we say thank you. thank you. But most of all, Master, we just want to ask that you would forgive us for our sins. Yes. For none among us have not sinned at some time or another. And Master, we ask that thou just be with us as we go forth to proclaim your word. We ask that thou allow the Holy Spirit to fall fresh upon thy servant. Allow me one more time to dip my bucket in an old well and to draw up some fresh water. Master, we ask that I would take this tongue of mine that sometimes it's hard to tame and tame my tongue. Take this mind of mine that sometimes it's not regulated and regulate my mind. And this so hard that sometimes skips a beat. Master, we ask that I would just fix it, Master. And then, Master, we pray that I would just bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Put your long arms around, protect you around, Sister Smith around Brother Moon and not only them, Master, but around those that stand in the need. Master, ask that thou just put your own protection around Brother Tim Langley. I found out that his wife had put him in hospice care. Said he had, but the doctor saying he had 48 hours. But Master, I know a doctor named Jesus. When man say 48, you can say 48 more years. So, Master, we pray that thou bless those families and help them to understand if you don't do it, we know you can. Master, we pray that thou bless the ministers that are on this, on this roster standing with me. Bless the choir, the usher. Bless the lay members. Bless our musicians. Then, Master, we pray that thou put your long hand protection around my spouse, Master. We ask that thou bless her in a special way. Bless my children one by one and name by name. Master, for anyone else I fail to call, Master, you know that you should charge it to my head and not to my heart. Now speak, Lord, for your people do hear. For it's in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Good to see you here, Brother Hopkins. Amen. Been a long time. Amen. Amen. Can you give me just a little bit of echo? Amen. Just a little bit of echo. Amen. God is certainly good, and he certainly watches over his people. Amen. In this old life of mine, I've had many
God has never left me alone. Right, Amen. Amen. Sometimes I've walked away and seemed as if they left him, but he's never left me alone. Right. Amen. Amen. If the master's will and the Holy Spirit will guide me, we want to call your attention to the book of Matthew. Amen. The eighth chapter. And want to begin reading at that fifth verse. Matthew 8 and 5. Matthew 8 and 5. Amen. And you'll find these words recorded. <clears throat> it says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there met him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lie at home sick of a palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should have come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. May God have a blessing to the readers and the hearers of God's holy, holy and divine word. Right. If the Master's will and the Holy Spirit would guide me. Amen. We want to talk from this subject. Just say a word. Amen. Just say a word. And every now and then we need God to just speak a word. Amen. Amen. In our hearts. You know. We say, I feel you, Lord but I want to hear you. And God speaks to us in many ways. For the Bible says that God spoke to one of his great, powerful men of God through a small, still voice. He thought that God would come to him in a loud voice. He thought he would be in the thunder, but he wasn't in the thunder. He was in the battle. He thought that God would come to him in many different ways. But I stopped by to tell you, God comes sometimes in a small, still voice. And he speaks to our heart. Tell us what it is that he would have us to say and what it is that he would have us to do. I don't know about nobody else, but I just believe that God spoke to us this morning when we got up out of our bed and said, it's time for us to come to the house of prayer. Amen. This is the first Sunday of a brand new year. Yes, and I just believe that I, in my mind that in God's house is where I want to begin starting my year. Amen. For on last Sunday, I declared that we're not having by, uh, watch night service. But I said that I, I want to be in the God's house. So I said that from 11 o'clock until 12 o'clock, I would be here. I didn't say that you had to come, but I said I would be here and the doors would be open. Amen. And when me and Kyrie got to the church at about five minutes to 11, we walked in and Kyrie said to me, Daddy, ain't nobody here. And I said, we are here. And as soon as I got into the sanctuary, I started hearing people pull up Amen. And we had a nice crowd, amen, for that prayer. And I listened to people pray, and some of them prayed just from the depths of their heart. 
but I recognized that there were two of them that prayed and they prayed to tears came out of their eyes. It was a young man and a young lady. And I understood right then and I felt, their, I felt everybody else's prayer, but it was something about those two that prayed. It seemed like they had been praying before. And you can tell when a person has been praying and, and when a person haven't been praying. Because when a person that haven't been praying, sometimes they have to think of the next word to say because they're not used to doing something. But when a person been calling on God for a long time, All right. amen, it seemed like it just flow out of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen, because they're used to calling on God. Uh -huh. And these two people, when they was calling on God, I could feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Not saying that I couldn't feel it for nobody else, but for some reason, God showed me something. I, I heard God speaking right then. And it seemed like God was saying their prayers are going to be answered. Yes, yes. And I stopped by to tell you, all we need to do is just get a word from the Lord. All right. Amen. And we know everything's going to be all right. Yes. For some time we have loved ones or even ourselves will be in the hospital. And, amen. The doctor will walk in and look at us and check our temperature and sort of put his hand on our arm or something or touch us on the neck and turn and walk away. But I know a man that don't even have to put his hands on you. Amen. He can just speak a word. Amen. And the fever will start leaving. Because I'm reminded of uh, the disciples how in, that, in the book of Matthew how they came to, to Peter's house. And the Bible says Peter's mother-in-law was sick of a fever. And when Jesus came in, amen, and saw her, amen, he didn't go over and put his hands on him. He just spoke a word, and the fever began to leave. All right. Hey, you see, we need God to speak a word sometimes in our lives. Yes. Well, we need somebody to speak a good word to us. Yes. Amen. For many times, God don't just come down like, like he did in the Bible days. He don't come down and, and sit at your bedside, but he'll send an angel. All right, now. And believe it or not, all of us had an angel sitting at our bedside on last night. Oh. Amen. God sent an angel to watch over us while we slept and while we slumbered and while we know not of our being. Yes. Amen. God had his hands on us. And early this morning, he touched us with that finger of love. And our eyes came open. But how many of us woke up this morning and simply said those, those two or three words, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Every now and then, God don't, don't, don't expect for us to do a whole lot. He don't Expect us to turn over stones and everything. Else. But every now and then, they just, he just want to hear us say thank you. Uh -huh. Amen. Because so many times we want to hear people to tell us thank you. Right. Amen. When we do something for someone, we, we, we're not trying to say you owe me anything, but just to say thank you. Uh -huh. Amen. There used to be a time when we would respect one another. Amen. I know when I was coming up, if someone, an older person came in the house, I don't care if it was the biggest drunk in town. He will, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. There's no more respect in the world now. Yes. Amen. It's not just saying that just by respecting the person means they up higher than we are. Amen. But sometimes we got to humble ourselves. Uh -huh. Amen. To let them know, amen, that I, I don't care who you are, no matter what you're doing. I want to give you honor. Yes. Amen. And that's the way God did. Even Jesus himself, those that were crucifying him on the cross. Amen. He could have been just like us. If somebody lie on us, we're going to lie on them. But look at what Jesus said. Jesus simply said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. Amen. He even honored those that was crucifying him. And every now and then, that's the way we need to do. We need to honor folks, amen, that's lying on us. Right. Amen. But for the Bible said, do good to them that mistreat you. Amen. And, and the only way to do good to somebody to mistreat you is to pray for them. Right. Amen. Don't spread their name on every sign, boy. Just pray for them. Yeah. And let them know that the Lord got his eyes on you. Yeah. Amen. If God got his eyes on you, I know everything is going to be all right. For the Bible said Jesus was now coming into a city of Capernaum. Right. He had already healed a man who came to him and said he was sick of the palsy. Amen. He had a bad disease. He, he came to Jesus and said, Master, if thou will, thou can make me whole. 
And the Bible said, and the Bible said, Jesus said, I will. Amen. And the, and, and the disease that he had, amen, left his body. And, G, and Jesus simply told him, go thy way and tell no man what I've done for you. He said, but go thy way and show and do what Moses said for us to do when I do it, when somebody, when you are healed by God. Go to the priest and offer to the priest the gift that you're supposed to offer to the priest. But instead of him doing what Jesus said for him to do, he went about spreading the news of how Jesus had healed his body. And then the Bible said when he left this man, he came into the city of Capernaum. And there met him a man, one of the servants of a man that was a centurion. And in the, in the book of Luke, he, see, he tells the whole story. In the book of Luke, he came to Jesus and said, this man who, have, who has a servant that's, he, that's sick. And he said, this man who... You need to heal him for he has been done the great things in our community. For he has built us a synagogue. And even for that, you ought to heal his servant. Right. You see, God don't care how many synagogues you put up. Right, God is looking at your soul. Yeah. God don't, don't, don't care how many times you come to church. But God cares about how many times you brought somebody else that needed to see Jesus. Amen. We'll come in the church ourselves. But how many of us will tell somebody to come to the house of God? Right. How many of us will tell somebody that Jesus is still in the healing business? Oh, yeah. He's still making ways out of no way. He's still a burden bearer. Yeah. He's still a heavy load carrier. Right. He's still a friend that will stick closer than any brother. Right. Amen. They told Jesus that this man had built us a synagogue. And you ought to come down and heal his servant because he is in a bad condition. And the Bible says when Jesus said, I'll go with you. Amen. But the Bible says that Jesus was entering to the city where this man was. He sent another servant to see Jesus. And he said, he said, he told him to tell Jesus that I thought I was myself not worthy to even come to you myself and ask you to heal my servant. For I'm not worthy for you to even come under my roof. And the Bible said when Jesus saw this man's faith, Jesus said, I've not found such faith. No, not even in Israel have I found such faith. For this man told him, said, I too am a man set under authority. Said, I say to one, go, and he'll go. And I say to another, come, and he'll come. And I say to another, do this, and it's done. So I understand what authority is all about. But you don't have to even come to my house. But just say a word and I know everything going to be all right. But you know we're living in a time now where we want folk to come to our house. Amen. Deacons didn't come to see me when I was sick. Preacher didn't come see me when I was sick. But Jesus said, if he just told him, just say a word and everything was going to be all right. You see, I understand we can't be in all places at all times. But we can say a word. Amen. Sometimes just a word will make everything all right. For the Bible said when they came back, they didn't bring Jesus with them. When they came back to the house, the young man was already doing better. Amen. And somebody asked, what hour was it that, the, that you said to Jesus when Jesus said these words? And they said it was the same hour that they began to mend. You see, God can heal you by somebody else just saying a word. Yeah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got my mind made up. Yeah. When I come down to the end of this life journey, I want to hear God just say a word. Yeah. Amen. I want to hear him say, servant, well done. Yeah. Amen. You fought a good fight. Yeah. Amen. You've kept the faith. Yeah. Amen. All God got to do is just say a word and this church will fill up. But you see, I'm not so concerned about a church full of people. But my concern is people full of church. Amen. Because if you got a church full of people, amen, you got a whole lot of devils in God's house. Amen. But I want people that believe that God can heal our bodies. Amen. God can change our hearts. Amen. God can fix these evil thoughts that go through our minds. 
I need somebody that can save my dying soul. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, anybody here, have you ever tried him? Uh, ain't he a way maker out of no way? Uh, when your burdens uh, press you down, uh, you can go into your secret closet uh, and call on Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I got somebody. Uh, I can call him uh, early in the morning, uh, and he's right there. Uh, I can call him uh, in the noonday hour, uh, and he's right there. Uh, when pain uh, racked this old body of mine, uh, I don't have to run uh, and get an aspirin ball. Uh, I can go down uh, on bending knees uh, and tell God uh, all about my troubles. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I know him uh, to be a lawyer uh, in a courtroom. Uh, I know him. Uh, to be a doctor in a sick room. I know him to be a way maker when it seems like I don't have no way. When I don't have no money, I can call on Jesus. You know what he'll do? He'll make dimes spin like quarters. He'll make quarters spin like dollars. Ain't God all right? Yes, he's the one that can take three little fish and two little fish and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude. Ain't God all right? He can take a little and do a whole lot. And we can take a whole lot and just do a little with it. Ain't God all right? I'm so glad I got somebody. All I got to do is let him know I trust you. You don't have to come in and just say a word. And I know everything's going to be all right. Every now and then when I lay down at night and don't know if I'm going to wake up in the morning, I tell God, I tell God the same little prayer that grandmama taught me when I was a little boy. I said, Lord, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Ain't God all right? And that's all I need to tell him. I don't need to tell him how many people lied on me. I don't need to tell him how many times they put my name on every signboard. I don't need to tell him when I come to church, nobody's there. Just a few folk coming to God's house. Because the God that I serve, he looks, he says high, but he looks down low. He knows the hearts of people. I don't know about you, but if you come in here, if your heart ain't right, and you listen to people calling on Jesus, giving testimonies of how God has brought them from so far. If you come in here, hear the choir sing, hear old man of God stand up, open God's word, and tell you how he make a way out of no way. And you leave out the same way you came in. Ain't God all right? I stopped by to tell you, you might as well have stayed at home. Ain't God all right? Can I come in? I don't come in to see what somebody wearing. I don't come in and count the folk that are in the church. Only one I count is myself. And if I'm here, I know God's here. And all I got to do is stand up and preach his word and tell people what thus said the Lord. If a centurion can say to the servant, go tell Jesus to heal my servant and say to them, I'm not worthy for Jesus to come under my roof. Here's a man who had been his servant all around him. Here's a man under great authority, but he understood 
who, who had the greatest authority in all the world. Ain't God all right? I don't know about you, but I serve a man. I serve a man named Jesus. I serve a man who is the son of a living God. Ain't God all right? And he said, if I call him and call him right, he would answer my prayer. Anybody here, have you ever called him? Ain't it all right? Say yeah. I don't know about you, but I heard somebody say at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. Ain't God all right? And I got to confess, I know him. I tried him. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh yeah. He's all right. He died that I might live. He died on yonder cross. They tell me they carried him up Galgotha Hill. Rugged cross on his shoulder. Nailed his hands, ribbed his feet, pierced him in his side, put a crown of thorns on his head. Ain't God all right? They tell me that two thieves, one on his left hand, one on his right hand, the one on the left said to Jesus, If thou be the Son of God, come down, save yourself, and then save us. But the one on the right hand, he cried out and said, Look at him, man. Don't you know this man had done nothing amiss? But here we are. We done sin, and we are just for the sin that we done. And we're going to die on a rugged cross. But I heard him say, I said, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Ain't God all right? And that lets me know you don't have to come to church all your life to go to heaven. That lets me know you don't have to be the best of person to go to heaven. Because this man, he was a sinner. This man just simply said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. And God, all right, that lets me know God can save you on your way down, on your way to a burning hell. All you got to do is just believe. This man, he probably didn't know nothing about Jesus. Because he was a sinner. He was a thief from his heart. But he had enough sense to say, God, forgive me and remember me. When you enter into your kingdom, and you see there are a whole lot of people been in church all their lives, but die and bust hell wide open. And then somebody can come in here, the biggest drug addict, biggest drunk, biggest thief. Amen. Can come into church one day and simply say, Lord, forgive me. And remember me. Fall dead right then and go to heaven. Amen. All you got to do is receive that gift that God gave to us. God gonna give, gave each and every one of us eternal life. But I want my eternal life in heaven. When I come to the end of my journey, I know I've done enough to bust hell wide open. But I just believe that by believing in God, accepting him as his son, believe he died, when he rose the third day day, that I could make it in. See, I know I'm not perfect, but I still can make it in. You see, I don't want to live down here for no all these years and then go to hell. I want to see Jesus. And I want to hear God say, Well done, well done, to well done.
will.